What's up guys? Happy Naruto! My name is Amin and in this video I'm gonna show you to you how you can play with local and global variables when you define a function. So let's directly to the lab, sit back, relax and enjoy the show. What we're gonna do at the beginning when we want to play with that so we need our, I mean, I already have my setup, a Visual Code Studio, and let's define a function. Why we define the function? Sometimes there are some specific behaviors that they, they're gonna be repeated during the program. Let's say you have a command when it's hot, uh, I don't know, open the window, or when it's dark, turn the light on. So in this way, you want something to be repeated. You don't wanna write it every time. So you define the function. Let's say we would like to have a program with an open portal. Whoever enters asks the name and says, hello, something like that. So we're gonna say define, and I'm gonna call it greeting. So that greeting function, simply what it does for me, it does print, uh, let's say, hello. So as soon as I come down and I do, uh, greeting and I just run the program here it prints out for me hello but if I want to make it dynamic so maybe I would like to pass a variable here and I say hello and then a name so I need a program that when it starts it says what is your name or let's go for a predefined name Peter as soon as I run this program what will happen it goes and checks the body of the program. Okay, we have the name here and let's just print it out. Hello, Peter. Uh, what will happen if I put the name here? Here in this case, no differences. Uh, why? Because we have, the, actually we have the error because we didn't, I changed the body of the function and I didn't apply the change below. But look at that. We have a hello Peter again. So we're saying, go look for, in this case, we are not setting any value, any, any positional argument in our function. And it just, in the body of program, it checks, okay, there is a name, there should be a variable, which is called name, let me look for it. It's there and, okay, that's it. Hello, Peter. If I put the name here, it says, okay, now I know if I want the function to be uh, run the, at the beginning, I should look for that name. So where is the name? Name is here and that's it. Let me come down and I do name here, Jax. What will happen if I run the program now? So now this name actually is here globally in the whole body of the program. Let's actually do that again. And in this case, I'm gonna call it greeting one. And that, I'm gonna just copy and paste and then add one. So if I run this, we have two messages. Greeting, greeting name, It this name at the beginning, Okay, it checks there is a name here. Uh, what is that name? We have a global variable, which is Peter. However, locally, I have a name variable. So the one which is inside the body of your program is your local variable. I have a local one, so I'm gonna go for my local, the priorities on the local, and I'm gonna print hello, Jax, but the other one, it doesn't have any idea the greeting one it's maybe it could be the point of confusion but the thing is that a greeting one it doesn't have any idea about the local variable of the other function and by default they go for the global which is globally available in the whole body of your program so now it goes like this so what if i add two names here and i do one and i do two let's say name name one but here i'm gonna add the name one now this name look we have one name here this name because we don't have any variable which is called name locally it gets that name from here from the 
global side and name one is here locally so if i print that it will be hello peter which is the global and jax which is the local so the one which is inside the body is the local and we don't need to call the local i mean it's okay if i uh, don't call name one here if i don't put name one i mean i'm not supposed to put name one because it's local local variable it doesn't go as the uh, positional argument and uh, so and by default when you have a positional argument it goes for the the global when it checks okay there is no global uh, or we have it, it gives you an error when it says there is a global it gets it but then it checks if there is a local okay hopefully now it makes sense and uh, you can try this one at your own time but let's go for another this one will make it maybe more clear for you let's define a portal it opens and starts to ask a question to see what you are going to do um let's stop, come up with the idea okay let's define a function that it checks how many even or odd numbers do we have i'm gonna do def main i would like to go for the body of my program def main so i need a starter function like a greeting function that we have so what can be my starter function let me come here def starter and my starter i can come up with something and i call it choice and it can be or let me yeah input i can say uh type one to add a number or just just a character to terminate whatever to terminate like that and that's it so this program it checks if there is a one it will be going to the next step unless it just terminates the program and then what i'm gonna do actually so we should return the, cho the choice obviously because each function by default it returns none so we should def uh, return the choice process step so that main we have the starter and of course i need to make another so this choice now it's look at that uh, we have a choice here and we are returning the choice however look at that it's kind of grayed out it's not the same as same color as this and this choice is like the local variable inside this function because we are defining that inside the function okay choice and i would say if the i mean i'm copying actually this choice to this choice but they're not the same if the choice is um if it's equal equal one okay so I, I said if it is one so we should go for we should go for getting an input and we're going to check if we have even or odd numbers so let's call it even odd let me come here and def even odd and the function to check if we have even or odd numbers um we need an input i'm gonna call it imp let's go for okay imp and i'm gonna do make it integer right at the beginning then input then what i say why happened okay input number uh number like that maybe i can go to the next line okay then I get that and I would say if that imp doesn't have any remainder to two which means it is an even number so I need a counter obviously I'm gonna do a counter which must be zero at the beginning okay perfect now I have a function what it does for me 
it checks if my it, it gets an input it converts it to an integer and uh, it checks if it is even or odd and if it is even it adds one for me and then that's it however we don't want our program crashes what am i gonna do i'm gonna try in case the user the look at that we have two errors here at the beginning in case the the user it adds i don't know a string or whatever that you cannot convert it to integer you don't want the program crashes so you use try but this one it says hey i might i must not be here and i should be here so we bring counter out of that and they are set because of indentation so we're good now try this and accept uh what would be wrong it will be value error except value error just simple message print wrong value or wrong input something you just need a message okay perfect so far even on the function is uh, it, it's good that's well it is working and then finally if it let's say else because hmm, it's gonna stop at some point and we are giving it the opportunity at one for checking even or odd or just go out so we say else and then we go for let me make function i'm gonna call it termination or terminator now go def termination and what i need to do okay it's good to print out how many uh even number we counted because we're counting so let's do print um, f counter and what do we have here okay counter even numbers were added like that exclamation mark perfect and uh, so we're good then simply i come here and say if name equals equals how much equals uh main like that and then so we want it to be in a while forever loop we want it to keep on asking asking and counting so while true and do main for me and so that termination function in fact it is missing something because there is no break here how we're gonna break the loop uh, I will come at the beginning of that and I do import sys. So I'm going to import sys and then I will come here in the termination part argument. I do sys then six. That's it. So, okay, that one helps to terminate. What is going on here? We have the main function. In, a, in my main function, first I start, I ask what the user wants to do, and it says, okay, I want to add a number, and I want to pl uh, apply it. So I type one, it checks if the number is even or odd, and the next time, because I'm in a while through loop, the, the next time I just add a random character, and then what will happen, uh, I like the thumbs up, that just showed up here. Uh, and then what will happen? I just go for termination. Termination, it prints out for me that amount of even uh, numbers that were added and exit, and that's it. However, something is eye catching here. This counter actually, Visual Quiz Studio is yelling at us and it is saying, hey, this counter here, it's underlined for you. Something is wrong. What is happening? Mm, let's see what mistake we just did. If I come here, I can see this counter is inside even odd function. So it is a local variable for even odd function. And I cannot call a local variable 
from one function to another function which is local okay so it is local to that function it cannot be used in this function what i'm supposed to do well simply i can come here and i can make it global then i'm super smart however what happened this one now it's kind of grayed out here this counter is okay look at that but this one it's grayed out uh since python reads line by line to do something let's add a number but let's add an input not two and see what is going on to happen it says uh add a, do something and i do let's say one then it says give me an input and i want to give something which is not even five the program works and i do one and i do nine the program works and i do r i go out that works perfect because this this part it's not working we are not we are not giving any sort of even numbers but if i run it uh sorry if i run it and i do one and i do two here at an even number it's like the program crashes look at that and the problem is that one counter it said local variable counter reference before assignment okay what is the case now i want to have a variable which acts as local and global at the same time uh, maybe we can come here and okay this function is okay because it's on the first line but this one this counter is like too deep into the body maybe if i just simply say hey i want you i want to introduce you to a global variable which is called counter so now you know for this one you should go there out and get it and bring it and then take it back after it changes um okay i'm gonna run it now and i do at one and two voila it didn't uh crash so and then one and then six so we added two and then one and let's say three and i just do y y y whatever so it must say we added two even numbers and when i do that perfect and it goes out and that 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 looks really cool actually i really like that and yeah that's it so in this way we can on the greeting function we're, we're, we're checking how we can have a local and global variable but in this example actually we have a local variable which goes and asks for the global one and then it changes and it brings it back and it, it's no longer be zero after working on that and that was it but uh let me just simply add something else sometimes if you don't wanna break your program like this there is another way that you might wanna do that for that termination we know each function by default it returns none if you make it return something else you might be able to close your program a different way here you are going to say if main uh not equal to false then do it what is going on to happen this is another way you can terminate your program so you have your main function here you are in case you go for the else the termination it runs but the termination doesn't exist here your function it returns false and when it comes back for your loop it checks okay it's false now it's not none i'm gonna stop if i run this let's just uh check it one and two and let's go for you and then stop okay so much that works and that's really cool uh i hope it was a quick and brief video for you to to learn how it works and how you can define the function and hopefully it was uh proper enough for you if you like that don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, if you have any question put it in the comments below and happy new guys
uh enjoy your time take care bye